reveal, mix up the audio, um, our new baby. Um, what I'm going to do over the next X minutes, hours, days, years is uh, show you a little bit what Mixup is and how to best use it and uh, why it is the most amazing thing that ever was on this planet and potentially other planets. Um, so uh, let's cut directly to what's important. What is Mixup? Mixup is a music collaboration system uh, for producers, mixers, artists, anybody who uh, makes music and needs to share it with other people and get feedback on it and deliver it to other people. Because Mixup uh, fixes a bunch of issues uh, that we all have when we make music. It's really difficult to summarize it in one, you know, elevator pitch line. We've been trying a lot. Um, we spent a lot of time with Guillaume, who's a uh, Guillaume Chalayac is my partner in Pure Mix and in Process and in Mix Up. And the two of us have been dreaming up this thing for you guys. And we spent a lot of time making sure that everything is very clear and useful. And, uh, and be, we've been going back and forth a lot about how to describe Mixup. And the thing with, with, um, with, uh, with it is that it's hard to describe in one line because it does a lot of things centralized towards um, the, the communication part of the music business or the music creation. So there are, in my view, besides all the music stuff, you know, learning your scales, learning the difference between a compressor and EQ, that stuff. Uh, there are four main uh, roadblocks into the, the proper flow of a project with collaborators, especially since, you know, Coco, Roro ruined everybody's uh, flow. Um, number one is centralization, meaning I'm working here and um, two of my collaborators are in Toronto, two of my collaborators are in Paris, uh, one of them bounces between Miami and LA, right? And so we have all these songs and all these tracks in various degrees of completion. And, um, and so everybody has their own ways of communicating. Some people like text, some people like email, some people like WhatsApp. You know, if you work with somebody in France or in South America, you're going to get WhatsApp. You're not going to get a text. Um, and so all that stuff is very all over the place. And so it can be very difficult to wrap your head around, okay, so if I'm going to work with Lolo, I'm going to text. If I'm going to work with Team Dupe, uh, I'm going to WhatsApp. If I'm going to work with Sophia, I'm going to email. And so, and so that scatters your brain. And then over the course of a project, maybe one producer has uh, a way of communicating and another producer has another way of communicating. So I was here, Lolo was here yesterday and we are talking about her future stuff. She wants to play me su some music and she's like, okay, so this one is on SoundCloud and, um, and this one is in, I think it's in my, I think he sent it to me in my text. Let me see, you know, and that's, so that's a, a real problem. This many ways of communicating and there is no federation. And uh, that's, that's a really huge problem if you start being very active. Second, it's very difficult to communicate about music. Um, you know that once you start trying to describe something to somebody else who's not in the room with you. If you can't go play, what do you think of this? Uh, if the person is remote, then you have to say, okay, you know that part uh, after the first chorus where this, that, those four bars uh, where you go, I love you, baby, you know? That's the easy one. But if you want to describe the third snare on the second bar of the third chorus, first, you all have to agree which part of the song is the chorus. Uh, you have to agree what a snare is. Well, a snare is easy, but sometimes it gets confused with hi-hats and stuff. So that communication can be difficult. If you've mixed records or produced records or written music with people not in the same room, you know that the descriptions, um, the disconnected descriptions can be very confusing to everybody involved. So that's a very big problem. Third problem is um, file management and versioning. When you are across a, a big record and say a whole album, there's probably 12 songs. And on those 12 songs, the every if you're starting from production, for example, you could have 20 versions of the song, right? So 12 times 20 times little tweaks plus the masters plus the options plus the alternate versions. Um, the instrumentals, uh, it, so this a lot. It's a lot of files to manage, and it's um, if you already have a system, 
uh, great, uh, but a lot of people don't have a system, and it becomes a real problem. Where is that file? Which mix is this? Uh, which one did you like? Did you like the version 2 or did you like the version 5? It's difficult to keep track of that stuff, especially when it's spread over email, right? So if you, you finish with a mix, how do you send it to your, to your friend in LA? Well, um, you send them an email, maybe you send them a Dropbox link and then uh, in the email or via text, and then they're going to write back via email, and then they're the manager who's in, I don't know, Ouagadougou, look it up, uh, will send you another email contradictory to what the person in LA told you because they haven't talked, because they're nine hours apart. So that um, file management versioning and, and keeping track of who likes what and where is really complicated. And it's a headache. And it's actually kind of a turnoff to the process of, of working with other people if they're not in the same room. Um, and we, even though you know we're all going to get uh, properly vaccinated and uh, all that stuff, this workflow is here to stay. Because as far as I'm concerned, I worked this way in a remote manner before even the coronavirus came down because very few people come to mix sessions. Um, people send me their files, and then I mix it for them. And then I have to get their feedback. And that's where the idea for mix-up came from. And then one last major modern issue is level management. So the number one enemy uh, in the record-making process is the perceived loudness. So you do this great mix or this great production. It's, it's not as loud as the previous one, and it doesn't get the proper attention because if it's not as loud, the human brain will turn off and um, and um, even your more evolved human brain will turn off and decide that it's not as good because it's not as loud. And that's just natural human biological uh, reaction that has been ruining records for decades. And it's come to a fever pitch with the uh, the loudness wars. And um, and that's a it's a real problem every day. So um, Guillaume and myself decided that enough was enough and we were going to come up with a solution for all these issues all rolled into one. It's called Mix Up the Audio. And um, I'm going to show it to you. So um, if you want to show my screen, which is a lot more interesting than my face, there you go. So this is Pro Tools. Um, and the thing about Mix Up is that it works from within your DAW. It works many ways, but the main way is from within your DAW. So here's my Pro Tools session. And um, you, as you can see, uh, it's your standard run of the mill. This is a production. It's not mixed. This is this uh, wonderful uh, duet out of Toronto. Um, their name is not fully in stone right now. We shall call them Jupiter and Mars. That's the name of the band. Came up with that. Uh, hopefully you like it. Hopefully they like it. So this is their session. And it's a production session. And I have here on my master at the end, for those of you who know me, this is not my regular template because I'm not mixing this. I'm producing this, right? And in the production stage, that's where you get a lot of feedback uh, because you say, okay, do you like this? Do you like this snare? It's, more, it's, it's, it's not a process of wrapping things up. It's a process of creation. So there's a lot of back and forth. Um, so uh, I got the sessions a few days ago, and I've been working on it. Uh, and um, on all my writing sessions, I just have a simple master and a limiter so that I don't blow the world up. And then I have the mix-up plugin. And then I have this other plugin, which you'll see in a second, uh, which you know is called Decibel. That's my level, but today we're talking about mix-up. So this is mix-up. As you can see, mix-up is a file player. This is a plugin on the master of my DAW, right? So if I play, if I press play, I still don't know if you hear the DAW, right? Um, Let's imagine that I am done with my current pass. And as you can see in here, I'm going to explain the whole interface uh, soon. I just want you to get the vibe. So this is my, um, this is my track. And let's imagine I just bounced it. This, genius move. I just finished it and it's beautiful. I want to send it to them for feedback. So I'm going to say I'm going to add a version and I'm going to browse my files and I'm going to go to their folder. There we go. This is called hung up. 
in I'm going to upload oh I haven't bounced it so let's bounce it while we talk there you go I'm just going to bounce this much we don't need the whole thing this is just for demonstration sake uh, let's call it 1.8 like this and 48 great session folder I'm going to choose a different directory this is as real life as it gets it's kind of cool uh, hung up bounces boom go I still don't know So uh, a song system, this is going to be good for us for the demonstration of this. Let's imagine I just did this, this production and I want to get feedback from, from my band. So I just printed it. I'm opening the Mixer plugin. I'm adding a version and I decided to browse files and I just bounce this, click OK, hung up, uh, 1.8, upload. So I am in my DAW right now. I'm, I, I am in Pro Tools and I'm uploading my mix to the cloud. To the mix of secure cloud and you can see a progress bar here at the bottom right here uh, and once it's uploaded it's going to analyze the file for uh, level and for format you can upload any format you want mp3s uh, hd files uh, 96k files whatever you want uh, mix up will take anything and now it's up it's right here and i can listen to it how can i explain this so it's very clear okay check this out um, so now I have hung up in the cloud. It appears in the plugin. I have my different versions here. This version was the version just before. This version right here was the MP3 they sent me, which is their demo, right? So this is the demo. Uh, sorry, this is the demo. Mm. And this is my current version that I just uploaded. Does it show? Mm. And so I can listen to different versions. Uh, and more importantly, I can compare between the DAW and MixUp. So for example, I'm here. This is the original version. When it's pink, it's MixUp. When it's greenish like this, lime green, it's the DAW. So my version. Right there, that's awesome you may have noticed that they're not in sync. Does it show? I still don't know. And that is because if you pay attention to my session at the beginning, the intro is not at one. The intro is a little bit into the session. So there's, a, there's an app for that. Uh, you can position yourself at the beginning of your session. You can say, this is the new beginning for MixUp and now they're in sync. Pretty awesome. Next step, when you want to send music to somebody, uh, you say you tend to leave messages, right? You want to say, hey, guys, uh, this is a new version or something like that. So what I usually do is I select my file and I leave a comment. There are two different kinds of comments. There are general comments and time comments. General comments show up untied to the timeline. And I say, uh, well, something original. Hey, guys, this is the new version. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm not a very good typist. Okay, cool. And enter. So now, oh, let's see this. Let me edit that. Think with a T. Great. So now, when I invite them to listen to this, they will be 
able to listen to the track right away and they will be able to hear my message. If I want to attract their attention to something important, like for example, uh, the adverse, let me move this out of the way so you can see. Okay, say I'm here and I press play. Uh, you notice that mix up full right away. Let's say, here I can make another comment that says, here we are missing a background vocal. Uh, any ideas? There you go. And then I send it out. I send that out to MixUp, and they will be able to see this. So when they play the timeline, this comment will come up at the right time, and this comment right here, the general one, will be, you know, the first thing they see. So this is where. In, in, in the process, usually, um, you would send a Dropbox link to your friends. But here, you don't have to do that. You don't have to switch apps. You don't have to do anything. You can invite somebody uh, right away from the plugin. Um, let me show you. I'm going to invite uh, Mark. There you go. Uh, yo, spell the French way. Uh, new. Uh, Jupiter and Mars idea, what uh, yeah, I think. So with this, I'm able to send Mark an invitation to this uh, track directly from the plugin from within Pro Tools, which is bananas. The other options for sharing are you can get a link and text it. You can set a password if you want to. There are three levels of security in MixUp. There is no security kind of like a SoundCloud thing where you you uh, make a link and send a link to everybody and their mother and everybody can listen to it. You can set a password. So you could, for example, sell, send a link, but also send a password in a different route. So that's a stepped up security. Um, it's still no friction. Your client can just click on the, on the link and listen to music, just enter a quick password and it's good to go. Or uh, there's a mode called VIP mode where you have to actually register and make a free mix-up account to be able to listen to the music. And that allows you to work with, you know, people who want more privacy. So I'm going to send this track to Mark. So Mark just got an email to come listen to the song. And Mark is going to be able to open it either on his phone, on a browser, or in his DAW if he wants to, listen to it, and leave comments. Um, I'm gonna. We're gonna call Mark on Zoom in a second, um, so he can, you know, share his thoughts on on the music. Um, other things you need to know. You can. Uh, whoops, sorry, wrong click. Uh, you can come here and uh, do pretty cool things when it comes to the looks of your uh, system. As you can see right now, I am browsing my entire database of music, so you can see, um, you know, Grimes. Uh, Greg Reporter, um, Harlem Street and uh, Speakers Orchestra, Jack Mac, Lolo, Lazara. Uh, and I'm able to browse my entire online music library straight from my plugin. And so if I want, I can go into anywhere. So I can go to Ternoir, this really great record from last year, and actually can listen to it from here, which is pretty nice, right? I don't have to go browse anywhere else. It's all in the cloud. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and then um, let's go back to our system trying to show you a, a real uh, system around everything. Now I'm back here. Um, apparently Mark is, I hope Mark is listening right now. Maybe we should call him. Maybe we'd see a, a comment appear in real time. You never know. Um, so once you've sent the, the, the file, the invitation to your, to your client, to your collaborator, to your you know, A&R, whomever it is, they can distribute it. Uh, and everybody has access to it. So you might want to be careful about permissions, meaning what can they do with it? Can everybody comment? Can everybody download? And that is actually something that you can, well, one new commit. Mark, good call. Any room for a vocoder track? So Mark just listened to this and left a message, and it showed up here. So, and he left the comment at the spot the spot. So that means that if I'm here, for example, and I click on the comment, you'll see that Pro Tools is going to run there. And that's really key. Let me show you this because that is that is so, so good. So I'm at top of the 
the session and I'm listening to it. And it's green here, so I'm listening to my door. Okay, and then I see the comment that Mark said, but I don't necessarily know where it is. So if I click on the comment, then Mixup is gonna tell Pro Tools or your DAW to jump to that spot and you can know that's where he wants the vocal to track. You don't have to count seconds, you don't have to do anything, you just click on the thing and Mixup takes you there, which is really, really awesome. Uh, it, it's uh, that feature, maybe when you look at it like this, you're like, yeah, that's cool. Uh, but when you're working and, and you can do that, it's a complete, absolute life changer. Um, so, uh, where am I in my little uh, list of things? I want to show you everything uh, so that you know everything that happens um, with Mixup. Check this out. Here's a cool one. If you have a lot of comments, Mark, why don't you leave a lot of comments? I'm sure Mark is listening. L leave a lot of comments all over the place. Um, good ones, be nice. Uh, the thing they could do is you could do auto scroll, meaning that as your timeline plays, the comments will actually show in real time. And you're able to know where you are by looking at the comments. That's just great. It highlights the comments as you go through. There's also something else. It's like, I think the vocoder track is a great idea. I'm going to solved comment. And that just darkens that comment. And I can hide my soft comments. So I don't have to be assaulted. You know, when you get that email with like incredible amounts of feedback and you have to make uh, a separate text document or print them and then cross them out and it's a pain in the butt. Here, you don't have to do that. Um, could we have a shake? maybe a banana shaker if we can find one? Um, I will write back. I gave it to someone I love. Uh, no shaker here. Okay. Great, I reply that. He's gonna get that answer and then I can mark it as solved and I don't wanna ever hear about it ever again. So I hide my solved comments. I'm sure you can start to get the vibe on how efficient this is. Of course, since we have several versions, every version can have its own comments, right? So these two versions didn't have any comments yet. I'm back on 1.8, now these comments show up. And of course, everything is undoable. You can go back here and you can unsolve things. If things are being unsolved, it happens. Things get unsolved. This is not unsolved. Um, and all this is pretty flawless and, and quick, and you don't really have to read a manual or anything to, to get it to go. Uh, it just works. So that's great. Ooh, someone likes my guitars. Very nice. So if I click on this, those guitars, get it. So if you remember uh, at the beginning when we discussed communicating about music, and describing which part is which and all agreeing on you know which instrument is which and which section is which this solves that problem big time it solves the problem of communication because you can see us converse on the track in real time um, it solves the problems of centralization if you look at my uh, track here my uh, my stack i call it a stack because probably that's what we call it during uh, development uh, apparently there's a new version of it, uh, available yay um, this is the work I've been doing for the last year and a half. Um, and I've been doing everything on Mixup so that you know I can share with people. And um, I'm able to go and, and look at what I've been working on. Like this is the Cabra record I've been mixing. And uh, I'll show you the playlist. Uh, and uh, Jupiter and Mars, uh, the new Lolo Zui single that's right here that has a lot of versions. Uh, this one, for example, has version 1.5, had 41 comments. I hear a click. Uh, try removing the vocal chop. Uh, try removing this hi-hat. And all this, all centralized in one place and all with the entire team. Here we have Lolo and Stelios and Doug all communicating on the track to try and make it as good as possible, as fast as possible. We never were in the same room. It's really awesome. Um, I could not have made that record without, <coughs> sorry, without mix up. So uh, we're back on Max and Johnny. Um, what else am I going to discuss? Mark, uh, let's bring Mark on and have a conversation about about that. Uh, Mark, I'm going to bring you onto the screen. Make sure you're dressed. There you go. He's dressed. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? 
Very good. Okay. So um, when I sent you the link, what, what happened after that? Yeah, so you sent me the link and uh, I'll share my screen with you here. Okay. And I'm gonna show you exactly what happened for me. So I got, let me find the share button, there we go. Okay, I got this really great looking email. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been invited, so Fab invited you to review the track and got the name there. I could click there to go to it or I can click on play track. Mm -hmm. And then it opens up my player. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we'll notice that my player looks different than yours, right? Mm -hmm. You're in an admin view. Yes. Uh, but same thing, I can go through and listen and I can check out the different versions next to each other, mm -hmm. and compare things, uh, which is awesome when you have a whole bunch of comments and you're trying to listen, did the mix engineer, you know, make these adjustments and then let me hear the before and after of that, of that comment. Yep, and uh, everybody should notice that Mark is listening to the track I just bounced in his browser. And Mark is in Ohio, I'm in New York. He's listening in his browser. But if he wanted, Mark could have listened on his phone. And that's crazy. You can, uh, for example, when you work with, um, you know, artists like either um, Lolo or um, more like uh, pop artists who are always on the move, always uh, either on a shoot or in a video shoot or um, somewhere else, not at home, not in a studio. The number one place they're going to listen to their music is on their phone. And MixUp can stream to the phone. And um, Mark uh, showed you there that, uh, can you reopen your, your screen? I just want to show them something. It's pretty awesome. If it's not too yeah, much of a problem. Should, oh, there you go. I go back to my phone? That's your phone. Yeah. He's so technologically advanced. Um, so this is, we're looking at Mark's phone. Uh, and so in the stuff that I shared with him, you will see that there's the stuff uh, we've shared with him, and this is hung up. And he has the choice of playing the tracks either in HD or as MP3. Go back up. So that is key. That is super important. When you send people the, in, in the current way of working, like SoundCloud or, um, or Dropbox, uh, your, your uh, counterpart, your client, uh, is going to hear a very bad version of your music because those services sound bad because they compress the sound a lot to be able to have a lot of volume. MixUp doesn't do that. You can tell MixUp, play HD, and MixUp, if the, I mean, of course, if you upload an HD file, MixUp will stream that HD file to your client. And then if your client is in the middle of the savanna, then um, you uh, uh, just click, mark your entire Slack stack is public. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, you're a busy dude. Uh, if 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 your client is in the middle of the savanna in the desert or something, then they can uh, you can uh, play them in MP3. If they have bad reception, they can use an MP3. And and the, we spend a lot of time making absolutely sure that the MP3 sounds good. Um, and it's not it was that was a moderate amount of fun, but I'm, I'm very proud of how it sounds. So you you started to see the the process. I created the music. I, from the DAW, sent it to my collaborators, and, um, and he can listen to it, he can give feedback on it, and then I can come back to my, uh, to my DAW and get his feedback synced with my timeline in real time, totally transparent. And this works with any DAW um, because it's a standard AU, VST, and AEX plugin. So if you use something esoteric like I don't know, some old version of Cubase, this will work with it because it's a VST. Um, and it, it's, it's pretty fantastic. So um, that is the basic thing. Now let's, let's kick it up a notch in the principle of the workflow. Yeah, it, to uh, derail you for a second, I have a, uh, a story about sharing with the other platforms. OK, hit it's it. Uh, here's, here's Mark. OK, so I did a recent mastering project for a client. And uh, we were using MixUp the entire way through the through the process, mm -hmm. and I had approved approved masters from the client, and I sent them over via Dropbox for final delivery. Just you know, copy link, send it to their email. Here's your final masters. Mm -hmm. uh, and the client pulled up the masters to listen to them on their phone in Dropbox, and <laughs> they kept on commenting back that there was a a small noise at the beginning of one of the tracks. And I was listening on my side from Pro Tools and inside of MixUp, not hearing it and like squinting as hard as I can. And there's tears coming out of my eyes trying to hear this like small 
sound that he's that he's hearing and then um i was out at the grocery store you know i wasn't able to solve it and then things kind of tend to stick with me so i was thinking about it and i was like maybe i can hear it on these airpods while i'm walking around for some reason and i heard it but i was listening off a of dropbox so i sent him a message and i was like hey are you by chance listening off the dropbox player and he was so i said can you download it and then listen to it off a of quick time and then the noise was gone yeah so uh, yeah a funny story about that we didn't get it in mix up yeah dropbox. dropbox is an amazing tool i work i work off dropbox like my entire life is on Dropbox, but it was not designed for music. It was not designed to share and and work with music. It's good at handling, you know, files, uh, but music is a different kind of file. Music is has a the art is in the file, and so it has to be delivered in a flawless manner. And a uh, Dropbox uh, doesn't deliver in a flawless manner. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, I have stopped sending Dropbox. Uh, files a long, long time ago. So let me um, let me show everyone the browser side of things. So this is what we just created um, in my browser, right? So this is Pro Tools. This is the Dropbox plugin. The pff, sorry. This is Pro Tools. This is the Mixup plugin, and this is my browser with the website because it's both things. It can be your plugin. It could be on your phone. It can be in your browser. And so, um, and 98.3333% of all the functionality that is on the website is in the plugin. These days, I almost never go to the website. I just want to show it to you because it could be interesting. Maybe you're a music supervisor um, and you don't work in a doll. Maybe you're a uh, just a singer songwriter and you record all your ideas on your on your memos on your phone and you will be able to work with a producer and you don't want to be bothered with with a doll you can absolutely use mix up that way and um so i want to show you that that it works that way too um what else oh, oh yeah i know what i'm going to show you next uh here's a cool one check it out you can actually add art so i have a folder here uh, in I have a big hard drive and I have artist picks. Uh, let's see which one where well, they're really delightfully goofy. Uh, yeah, this one's great. So now I can decide this is going to be the cover, and then when my clients come, there's art, so it looks pretty and and uh, makes everybody feel good about um, you know coming to the site and seeing them hearing the music and seeing a pretty thing. Uh, something else that's uh, pervasive in the in the art of making records is you tend to do more than one song, hopefully. Uh, and uh, one of uh, the important things about uh, several songs is the context. So for that reason, we have playlists. Let me show you, uh, what can I show you? Sophia, for example. I just finished this record for Sophia Ray. It's a wonderful record. And this is her playlist. Um, and this is every song on the record, and I can press play, and I hear right away the beginning of the record. And if I want to hear another song, I click here, and I have another song, and I can jump around, of course. And all this is happening on MixUp, and also will happen on the plugin. Uh, one of the great advantages of uh, playlists in MixUp is that they actually are collections of tracks. So think about that for a second. If you have 17 versions of a mix you can put a playlist together and put that track with all its 17 person versions inside the playlist and you could decide which version is up on the playlist and you can do combinations of okay i like mix two for la quinta para uh and i like mix three for um helvetica and then uh, can we listen you know what would it be like if we had mix two for Helvetica and mix three for La Quinta? You can do it in two clicks, and you can reorganize your playlist, and you can organize how the playlists are uh, played. You just hit manage here, and you can change the order of things, just like that. Um, this playlist feature, Mixup has been ready for a long time, and uh, but it, it hasn't been released because it didn't have a playlist feature. And as I started using it, and other uh, people on the team started using it. We were like, huh, we can't work without a mix uh, um, playlist feature. Playlists are really super important. So it actually delayed the release of MixUp, which is why it's released now. 
and not many months ago because we wanted a very robust and very easy to use playlist feature and here's what we did with it so let me show you uh, let's go to like Pwn for example I just finished this awesome record for this French DJ named Pwn uh, I just cleaned it up for the label ah uh, okay let's go to Cabra there you go so this is the new Cabra record and there are um, six uh, songs in it and every song here is a track if I click on this arrow right here I'm now in the player I can do all the player things I want to do and I can go back to the uh, playlist and switch to a different player and here I can add versions see I have version 1.21 and version 1.3 so now I'm at the track level and if I go back up I'm at the playlist level if I play this playlist right now version 1.3 Lingote is gonna play but if I come here and I say hey you know we changed our minds we want 1.21 to be the star we start at we go back to the playlist and now version 1.21 and what's going to play in the playlist pretty nice uh, I'm going to put it back there so that I don't get a call from um, Edu saying hey what happened to my playlist I played for the label and the wrong version of Lingote played so there you go boom um, that's pretty awesome something else that happens when you start mixing different songs into a playlist is that you have um, level problems maybe one song is going to be loud and one song is going to be soft and uh, and that's actually a problem as I mentioned at the beginning you know if one song sounds louder than the other then it's going to make everybody feel like it's not as good um, at least most people so mixup has a level management system all you do in a playlist is you click level you say maximize level click save and now all this song it makes up is going to calculate the level of all those songs and it will play them all at the um, average LUFS level that is the best common denominator for all of them clearly this is 12.3 um, LU so now I don't have to worry about the first song being louder than the second and the third song being softer than the third the fourth none of that happens because mixup takes care of the level for you all you have to do is decide okay I want to maximize the level or I want to customize it and you could say okay I want it to be customized to Spotify level and you click OK now the entire playlist is going to play at Spotify level so if your collaborator wants to a B between your work and Spotify your level matched now if you want to cheat nobody here would cheat but you could say okay I want them to compare with Spotify but I want an edge you put it at minus 13 now you want to be louder than Spotify I would never do that nobody here would do that no nobody would do that so this is pretty awesome you can turn it off uh, with people at the level of Cabra I don't have to do any of that because we're basically delivering finished mixes some of these projects sometimes well not Cabra but some of these projects I just did the mix goes straight to distribution so I want them to hear the final level so that's why the level is optional you can turn it on and off you can maximize or you can custom right I'm gonna summarize that you no longer have to worry about delivering a mix to beat a demo just upload the demo to mix up say okay we're going to play everything at minus 14 you upload your demo to mix up you put you mix to mix up you tell mix up yo minus 14 and now you don't have to beat the level of the demo you can only beat the sound of the demo which is pretty nice um, so that's pretty awesome what I'd like to oh sorry let me go back in here and that's level management at the playlist level but in reality you can push level management all the way to the version level because this happens between versions too right uh, so you can manage level uh, here's for a reason that I don't know oh because I'm in a playlist if you're if I go back to my uh, Jupiter and Mars that I created earlier I hope I'm not going too fast mark if you if you're still with us and you see questions uh, on the you know internets that you need to tell me let me know so I'm back in a track and the one we started with I have um, hung up 1.8 I have 1.5 and I have their demo at the version level I can maximize and that's minus 12 because mixup analyzes your track the minute you upload it so it's basically instant uh, and now their demo and my mix will play at the same perceived level so I don't have to you know 
put a limiter on the end to convince them that my stuff is better than theirs, uh, or vice versa. Um, I can just have the real truth here, and I can manipulate the truth if I want to. So that's pretty cool. Um, what else did I want to show you? Uh, there's one uh, more thing. Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me bring Mark so he's not a voice from the sky. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Um, there's a guy in the chat named Ben Lindell. Oh, I know him. Yeah, good friend. Uh, so he had a really good point that this is a great way to teach clients about levels and loudness and how their mix will fit into the new world of loudness. You wouldn't believe how great a tool that is for that. Um, that's my day, uh, every day for a while. It's like, hey, why don't we, um, you know, I just had a situation where I uh, finished a track and sent it to mastering and um, and I thought the master was great, um, but the artist didn't think so. And I said, but what are you listening on? And, and uh, she didn't know. And I said, OK, well, how about w you know, I'll make a, a mix up of the, of the two tracks. And I will put my mix, and I will put the master at the same level. And then we listen together. Um, now we're comparing apples to apples because they're being played at the same level. And it just so happened that the master was great. It was very good. But it was, we were able to identify in, in, in real terms what is it that bothered her. Whereas with the level difference, it was impossible. So she was able to say, oh, this is what I don't like. And, and I said, OK, you can call the mastering engineer and, and explain to them exactly what the problem is, as opposed to not being to quantify it, because there's so much um, attached to level. There's so much emotion attached to level, not as, not as it, like, it's an important thing, but it makes you feel different. And thus, you're not able to articulate in a rational manner to the professionals on your team. So it's, this, this just happened a couple days ago, where I was able to use MixUp to show, yeah, you know, this master is actually doing what it's supposed to do. And, um, and OK, so it's a little too forward. Now we, dis we discovered that she didn't like the fact that it was too forward. I said, OK, cool, no problem. Just tell the mastering engineer, and he's already done another version. It took no time at all. Before then, it was a back and forth. I was like, I don't like it. Why? Well, I don't know. And there's no comparison possible. So for that, mix-up is unbelievable. And for me, um, it's allowed me to work with teams with confidence. I'm able to, I don't have to send the loudest thing on Earth. Uh, even if in some situation at the end, it's going to become the loudest thing on Earth. I understand that. Uh, but I don't have to do it. I, I can I can just put everything on mix up, lock it up, and then um, and then they are forced to listen there, centralization, and then um, they listen to they know what they're listening to versioning file management, uh, and uh, they're able to get back to me on that platform, and I know exactly what they're talking about, which is the clear communication, and everything is leveled. So I think that for that, yes, Ben. Um, centralizing, centralizing all that stuff in there is great. Let me show you a couple more things. So you're done with your record. Congratulations. Um, what do you do? Uh, well, you tend to deliver it, right? So now people have just been able to listen to it, and they've been able to leave you comments. That's great. Uh, but in the end, you're going to have to deliver it. And so to deliver it, we have a function for that. You allow download. By the way, you haven't seen this before. But uh, this is the, the control you have you, where you can decide what your um, clients or artists can do with the things you send them. They can download or not download the content. They can comment or not comment. You can turn comments on, back off. You get notifications when they answer or not in your email. And then there's this little approval thing where you can turn the approval function on. So I'm going to uh, turn download on. And let's just say that. This version 1.8 is the one that's approved. And my little icon next to it is, I approve this. I endorse this message. Uh, and then you may have noticed that here, there's a little manage thing and for the downloads. And I can decide, OK, only the start version are downloadable. And they can download an MP3. So you don't have to do it. We do it for you. And they can download the original source file. And then you can then give them a link. That is the easiest, simplest, most foolproof way of download of uh, delivering your record, meaning that you have the comments here, you have the approval system, you know which one is approved by your client, and you can you can literally get the link, save the settings, and now I can send this to Mark or to um, Max and Johnny 
Jupiter and Mars, and they can download the final file, send it to mastering, send it to their mother, whatever. But you're in control and you know exactly what you're sending to them. And that is really awesome. Because before you would have to go do some file management on a different place, on your uh, Dropbox, for example, and you would have to send an email with that Dropbox. You'd have no way of controlling. You have no way of sending them all the versions in an elegant manner except for creating another folder. Uh, this, you can pick and choose what you send them, and you can, um, you can decide if they get the MP3 or not, which is great because I hate having to go back and create MP3s for everything. Uh, and it's, it's really a really super elegant manner to uh, basically deliver your music after in the same place where your entire team has been working for the last X months making the record. Like you're done. They send it to the mastering guy, no problem. I make a package from MixUp, I send the link, and there's never a problem because everything is controlled and everything is secure. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, Mark, come back on. Ah, Mark is gone. No, Hello. Mark is here. here. How are you doing? Uh, are there any questions that we could answer? Um, let's see. So guys, uh, go ahead and dump those in the YouTube comments. We're watching that for for questions and mm. uh while we wait for a second um i want to give like a another perspective from from uh sort of my level of clientele and everything so mm. uh some ways that mix up has been awesome for me uh i uh for one example i i work with some clients that i've never met before off of the internet mm -hmm. and they may have hired me without knowing me from a recommendation whatever that happens to be mm -hmm. um, and they say okay cool we'll we'll trust the recommendation and go with this guy for mixing mm -hmm. uh, one thing I've noticed is when I send them a mix up link and they see exactly how this works so there's the rough mix in there that they've been living with and that they loved and then they get the opportunity to go back and forth between these mixes there's an immediate thing of um, probably trust through a customer service perspective mm -hmm. where they're just like this experience is amazing working mm -hmm. with this person they're making this so much easier for me than it's been in the past mm -hmm. getting Dropbox links and, and sending the emails and stuff like mm -hmm. that so I've personally noticed an increased confidence in my clients just by providing this uh, platform that makes it so much easier for us to collaborate with each other remotely yeah it's so definitely it definitely feels very solid also um, you can send you can put your a bunch of your work into uh, into a folder. I'm going to show you how I organize my folders. You can put a bunch of your work into a folder, uh, in a, into a playlist, and um, and then you can turn off comments and turn off uh, download, and you can send that to prospective clients as a demo reel. It works. It's yeah. awesome. Uh, you can so you know somebody says you know you know can you send me like three or four uh, pop mixes you've done recently so I can play it for the artist. You're like yeah no problem. You just send them a mix-up link. They can listen to it on their phone. They're super happy. Everything is level matched. Um, uh, you don't have to like remaster them because one was loud, one was quiet. You can say, okay, play everything at minus 12, move. Um, that is, I use that all the time, all the time. And um, I actually send mix-up links to labels. And uh, the last couple times uh, I worked with uh, a label that shall rename Columbia Nameless. Um, uh, the team on the label, once we finished, um, said, hey, we have our own internal system. We have to use our own internal system because, you know, it's company policy. And they said, but could you keep the mix up live so that we can work? Because the internal system for that label is not uh, quite there yet. So literally, like, they had to move the whole project to their internal system, but they asked me to keep mix up live just in case. And I see them use it. So. Um, it's a really great way to have a solid body of work online, um, connect with other people. It's, it's secure uh, and it's really easy to use and it sounds bananas. Um, so, and it looks good too, I think. Um, uh, I have another note on that. Yeah. On that. Uh, so I had an artist that contacted me and they were, they were just asking, I need to make a, a place that you know, I can just send a URL to, to different music supervisors mm -hmm. so that they can check out work for, for a project. Yep. And they were looking at SoundCloud and everything, and then I turned them on the mix up and showed them like you can customize the artwork and you know match your levels and all of that stuff. And they wound up using mix up uh, over SoundCloud in that case. Too. SoundCloud so was groundbreaking. Really nice. SoundCloud was absolutely groundbreaking. They were the first to do that. Um, I don't like how it sounds. I just cannot stand it. And also, I just it's just 
I can never find my way around there. It's it's too too complicated. I'm not smart enough for SoundCloud. Um, so um, so that's part of the reason. The, out of the frustration, um, we made mix up, and also I wanted to work from the DAW. I, I didn't want to have to go to a, a browser at the end of my project. I just want to drag and drop the file into a plugin. I want to see my comments in the DAW. I don't want to have to have two windows open. I don't want any of that. And um, this is this is version one. The stuff that's coming, the ideas that are being developed right now behind the scenes for version 1.1 and 1.2 and uh, so on and so forth are awesome. Um, so I, I'm very confident that anybody who tries it uh, is is going to be happy with it. Let me show you a little bit how I organize my, my system. So uh, here on the left you have the, I'm, I'm in the browser right now, uh, here on the left you have my projects which is a high level, um, you can, it's, it's, it's your top, it's your, your desktop if you keep files on your desktop. Um, and then you can have a folder which is just a container for other uh, objects and so I have my mixes here, these are my archives. Um, Reference tracks. I like to um, have my favorite reference tracks in mixup. So then, when I'm in, I'm in the DAW, I can go browse to that and AB very quickly, which is very nice. Um, these are demos because we're working on it. This is the reels I was mentioning. You know, I sent somebody a reel, so there's a bunch of music there that I've sent to labels. And then this is my FabMix folder, and there are 34 folders in it. And the way I do it, some people do it by years. Uh, as you can see, it was created October 8th, 2019. Feels like yesterday. Um, I, I like to organize my work by artists because I see a lot of people organizing their stuff by years and I'm like, how do you do when you start a record in 2019 and you finish in 2021, which happens? That doesn't work for me. I don't want to re be reminded that I started this thing two years ago, no. So uh, what I do is I organize by artists. And so um, you see there's a universal audio thing here and there's probably a Moog thing for that uh, theremin. Yeah, there you go. So this is I, uh, the Clara mix, that beautiful thing. This was make all the exchange uh, was done uh, with mix up. And uh, it's beautiful. Have you heard that thing? So this is something I did uh, October 10th, uh, 2020. I have access to it right now. I don't have to go through chaos and re-download. It's all, all my mixes are up on the cloud. Um, and so I organize by artist. And the way I, then I organize two levels. If the artist has a label or a team, I will have a private side and a public side of things. So for example, and then I clean up after. So let's see what's still the Gregory Porter one. Uh, okay, so this one, was the private one, the internal one. It's a track, and within the track, there's three versions, and um, they're probably hidden. Yeah, I hid them so that nobody gets confused at the end of the process. Um, but those are the different versions. I don't want the, the label to see the different versions. I want the label to see the final version, uh, but I also want uh, maybe Gregory to be able to access the all everything the track list so I made another front-facing thing here um, where the label actually this was an experiment but the label was able to see just what I want them to see and that's the way I organize things for the Michelle Willis record for example we worked on that for a long 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 time so there was the fall 2020 and we went well into 2021 and um, this is every single song of the record in a playlist uh, and this is at the mix level and then in that same folder I made a playlist of all the masters once the mastering engineer sent me the masters I put it all in one playlist right here and I made a really pretty I put it a really pretty picture there so that it looks nice it feels good uh, and then she has a live record and so I made her a playlist of her live record and everything is centralized and I can send them links separately for all that stuff so we have our kitchen work the behind the scenes we keep it to ourselves and then we have the um, and there's the versions um, I don't remember if this is the latest one let me see there you go so you know apparently on mix recall 1.3 I adjusted the ESR. I fattened the leads 1.27 percent 
Um, and I added space around the back beak to make it um, less pointy. Cool. Um, and so I'm able also to keep track of you know the different revisions and everything. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, and that's how I organize my, my system. Usually when I'm going to mix a whole record and then I'm going to mix a whole album, I will start a playlist right from the top. I will start a playlist and I will put my first track into the playlist, uh, which is what I did for what am I working on right now that I work that way. Uh, the pawn record. So the DJ pawn record, the first thing I did is I started this playlist and every day uh, that I mixed a song, I, I added a track to that playlist and he got a notification. I didn't even have to tell him. I, it's just, you know, oh, I uploaded uh, Narrow Meadows today and uh, he got an email that I uploaded Narrow Meadows and he went and listened to it and he can listen to it in context with the other songs and then within Narrow Meadows, he can go in here and listen to all the different versions, which I probably, this one I cleaned up to uh, make sure everything was nice and clean for his label. Um, but that's the idea, right? So yeah, I'm, I create a playlist. I, and as I mix the record, I keep adding tracks to that playlist and they can listen and compare. And of course it's level managed. So I don't have to worry about matching levels. I mean, I tend to do the best I can to match levels, but it's not my obsession like it used to be uh, because I don't want the w time spent making it sound great being ruined by the fact that it's quieter. So now everything is at a defined level that I choose and I'm able to add tracks and work quickly and get feedback on all the tracks. It is pretty awesome. It is pretty awesome. Uh, so and Fab, we have a question. I have an answer, usually. All right, uh, so Recording KC asks, can you set an expiration for the link or does it stay live forever? So what you can do is, no, no, are you kidding? You, what you can do is in your invite thing, you can um, uh, kill the link, you can delete the link. Well, there's a password on this one. You can delete the password or you can generate a new link. If you generate a new link, it kills the old link and nobody has access to it, so it's secure. Also, everything is in, um, encrypted. Uh, the communication, the, in the plugin, for example, well, it's encrypted in the cloud, obviously, but in the plugin, when you, when you open the plugin, it downloads the data and stores it in an encrypted database so that you can work offline, right? Because you don't want to be stuck online. So there is a database, encrypted database, for the plugin on your DAW computer, and that is secure. And so say, for example, you're going to work on a plane, you open your session, your mix of data will be there if it's in your cache. And that's, you know, pretty nice. I wonder why that's in there, uh, um, but it's very nice. Um, maybe we ask for it? Um, voila, do you have another question, boss? Yeah, uh, so there's a lot of plugins out there that are really great for uh, loading in your reference tracks and then mm -hmm. being back and forth. Mm -hmm. Can you show how you use Mixup for that? Yeah, so basically anything's a reference, right? Uh, you could do uh, a reference could be a previous version of the song. A reference could be uh, a song from a different record that you mix. For example, this is like this is Max and Johnny, and let's say I want um, a, you know, so let's let's say the Gregory Porter one. So I'm going to go to the Gregory Porter one, and it's downloading. Did you see that? And now, so if I go say here in my song. Kind of the same groove. Um, so this is uh, Jupiter and Mars. I'm holding on to this and this is Gregory Porter. You notice that Gregory Porter is leveled at minus 14 because I sent it to Gregory and I wanted him to be able to compare with the other records on Spotify and not be startled and, and um, not be surprised. So that's a way to do reference. I am also, as I showed you earlier, if you go to my top level, I have my ref track here, and I have my ref mix playlist, and this is Immigrant Hands, which is like, you know, it's pretty awesome. And also you can offset the output gain of your reference. So if your reference is a little soft, a little loud, you don't, you don't have to use the automatic levels. You can do it manually. You can say, okay, I want Immigrant Hands to be, um, say, 3 dBs louder, and it is. It's pretty nice. Um, I'm not going to leave this this way because this sticks. There you go. Um, so that that's a way. The way I do it right now is I have these reference mixes. I also use infatuation from uh, Colette. There you go. And I'm able to have as many as I want. I used versions into a track. Uh, 
I don't know why. Maybe at the time we didn't have the playlist yet. Uh, but I use that for referencing. And I also reference, and this is the thing that's key, when I was mixing the Michelle record, if I go back to my uh, mix stack and I go to Michelle, I would work from the playlist so that I'm actually able to listen to my current mix against other mixes in the song level matched. And I'm able to make sure the bottom is tight and I'm able to make sure that everything was like really pretty and, and great. Uh, without having to agonize over it. It was just, just one simple click. And so it was, I mean, for me, that was a total life changer on this record because we spent so much time on it and it took so long to get it to the level uh, where we wanted it to be and that sometimes you lose perspective. So being able to reference quickly is really, for me, was really important on this particular record. Um, what else you got, boss? Uh, well, no questions at the moment. If you guys have more, put them in the chat. But yeah. uh, one thing I love about both the website and the plugin is when you get a massive list going of all of your projects and everything, there's a really cool uh, search feature in there that yes. you can filter down. So the thing is, I don't use it, so you should talk about it. I, I just know where I'm going all the time, so I don't really use the, the search feature. But you do, so tell me. Yeah, yeah. So if you're in the plugin, uh, if you want to go to the plugin now, Okay, I'm, I'm going to go to, hold on, let me make you smaller, but still mighty, small but mighty. <laughs> and I'm going to go here, okay, and I don't know if I can make this float. Let me hide this. Okay, just guide me. Okay, so yeah, our little magnifying glass there you uh, go. in the upper left there. Yep. And then you could type in Grimes, yep. for example. Okay, there you go. And now you're filtered down to that one. Yeah, this one is awesome. Thing. I don't know why I don't use that. You know, I should start using that. Um, it's super handy. It's very nice, yes. I just... And then I have no a... Uh, oh, also, you know why I don't use that? Because I work from the plugin, and the plugin remembers where you were. Yes. So I don't really have to, because every time I open my session, I am there back where I was before. That's probably why I don't use the search, because I, right. um, I'm 98.3% in the plugin. And, um, and so if I close this session, I reopen. It was going to come up like this. The cache will be here. The comments will be here. I don't have to search for anything. I'm there which is great. I don't have to wade through, you know, all the the junk mail that you have to wade through if you're your email. Every, I get back into the door in that place. That's it. What are you going to say? Okay, so this is one is a Pro Tools tip for people. Aha. This is one I love with it. So uh, let's go back to Pro Tools. You can make me go away. Uh, I've, I've used Pro Tools before. There you go. Okay, and uh, pull up mix up. Yep. Yes. And then let's make a window configuration. Oh, yeah. I do that too. Okay, go ahead. So, so yeah, you know, window, new configuration. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I'm here and uh, new configuration. Let's call it mix up. This is really dope. Uh, and window layout, include everyone. Okay. And then we're going to make a um, recall and we're going to call it mix up too. And we're going to say, yo, no, don't do that, but recall. Uh, let's make it 99. Actually, in my thing, it's actually 98. No, 98. OK, cool. Check this out. So now I'm here, and I'm hide everything. And say I'm here in this thing. If I type, uh, if I recall window 98, it's going to call mix up for, you, for me without having to do anything other than type the little code. It's nice. It's super handy. It's very nice, yes. Um, yeah, these okay. little details. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I, I actually have that in my template, so I completely forgot I had it. Um, right. Yeah. So for 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 you guys, for the function of clicking on the clicking on the comment brings the Pro Tools transport there. That function, for that to happen, you need to um, have a track in your session that has a rewire plugin on it. That's the way Pro Tools and most DAWs function. That's the only common denominator between all the DAWs. So in my template, I have a, um, a, just a, um, a little track. It's a stereo aux that just all my templates on all my DAWs. And uh, I have the Mix Up Rewire plugin on it, and that's it. You do it once, and it's, it's over. And you, you're able to just click on comments, and the, your DAW will jump there. It's worth it. That, that, that function is off the charts. It cha changes lives. Actually, that's what I say in those videos is that mix up saves lives. Um, it saves a lot of time, that's for sure. Uh, it saves a lot of grief and a lot of miscommunication. Yeah. 
Definitely time too, because uh, recall sessions are cut, uh, cut down big down. time because there's no misunderstanding. If right. somebody thinks the course is the pre-course, which happens a lot, um, uh, the little blue dot knows where it's at. Where do you want it? Here, you get it. Works great. Yeah. Very, very nice. Uh, this one, the technical team's actually on in the chat too, answering tech questions, but uh, just we'll try this one. Uh, Stefan Wessel asks, because of the Safari loudness issue, mm -hmm. uh, what browsers do you recommend? Any non-Safari that works best, or are they all well? Um, everything works great except Safari, as usual. Uh, anybody who's involved in any kind of web development knows that Safari is its own island uh, in the middle of an ocean of madness. Um, so um, I use Brave because I don't like being tracked. Uh, but Chrome, it's just the same. Uh, uh, Firefox, it all works. The only, uh, and by the way, I just want to qualify the Safari problem. Because of the fact that Safari is pretty ancient technology, they, the way they manipulate, handle audio is archaic. And thus, it is, um, it, you cannot preserve the sound quality and do level management. And so we had a long discussion, and we decided, you know what? Sound quality first, level management later when we grow up. So if um, uh, when Apple updates Safari to um, you know, modern standards for audio management, then Safari will fall right in line. Otherwise, just use Chrome or use Brave, Firefox, whatever. They, they, any, any modern browser will work. Uh, but Netscape and Safari, no. Um, so that's that. I've had zero issues um, with Brave in the last two years. So it's been we've been testing this extensively for two years, and it's it works flawlessly. What else awesome. you got, boss? Since okay, you have, I have a note from the team. Yes, hi team. Uh, Good job. So they would like to uh, talk about the storage system a little bit. So. Um, how much space we have, and can we use our online storage system? So uh, how many songs can you have? You can have as many songs as you want. There's no limitation. Yeah. It's unlimited. Um, on the, um, there's a free tier. So you can start using MixUp for free uh, no later than very soon, like now. Uh, the only limitation there is that after a while, your track will. Um, will no longer be online and that's it so if you need to deliver a song to somebody today right now you can do it for free with with mix up and you can get feedback and you have a grace period and it's all good kind of like the same idea as we transfer right mm. we transfer you get 15 days to for people to download your track and then if it's gone it's gone um and then um uh, that's a free tier and it has most fun functions and then the next tier up um the pro tier uh it's unlimited Unlimited everything. You just put the entire life on mix up. It's all good. Uh, we'll host it for you. Um, and then there's a studio tier, and that has the m more advanced features like uh, the VIP thing uh, and the delivery system. Uh, the stuff that is not people are not going to use day to day, but that you know studios or you know full time mixers or producers are going to use every day. And so that's in the upper tier. So we that way we're able to offer a free tier and a very affordable um, tier that does most of what Mixup can do. So that is the question that the team wanted me to answer, I believe. What else did I forget? Let's see. Uh, I don't see anything in the chat right now. OK. So maybe we'll give people one last chance to throw questions in. Yeah. And in the meantime, I just got a little celebration video from uh, Direct from France. Yes. Should we show people that? Yes, we should. I, I, should we? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> well, hopefully. <laughs> I know it's, right, it's cocktail see. hour in France now, so let's see what the celebration's like. It is. Let's see if I can get my phone to share up here. Oh, uh, Camille is. Camille. Um, Camille is uh, the lead on Mixup, lead programmer on Mixup. He's the project um, chef, chef de project. Uh, and he's been. Uh, you know, going through the birth of, of this thing from, from day one. He's been at the ground level of, of this madness. Um, you know, the, the, and I, I just want to say a word for, for the team. 
you, for you guys users <coughs> you're going to go on the website and you're going to use it and you're going to open the plugin and it's going to sync and it, things are going to work and and you're going to be like yeah this is good if you like it you're going to think it's great if you you know it may not be for you i'm I, so far i've gotten nothing but rave feedback it's like oh, where has this been all my life um it looks easy it is incredibly intense to do something like this and i want to give the it's technically you're basically the, the internet is a moving target that you're trying to shoot in the dark it changes all the time it's basically broken uh, and to have something this works this well that's this stable uh, and this advanced um, is in by not being Google it means that the team the, the dev team at, at uh, pure mix and mix of their badass and they are really dedicated and they work so hard and um, and it's really they've been that's all they've been doing for two years and um, and today is real so congratulations guys it was I hope you think it was worth it I think it was worth it let's see what the uh, what the celebration was oh yeah okay look at that that's Camille so congrats guys congratulations that's so nice and um, and the feedback we get is beautiful and I make sure that you all get it the video is not playing dude. I don't think the video is uh, going through nope all I'm seeing is Cami looking very happy. All right. Well, there it is. There you go. Cami <laughs> being very happy. Um, all right. So I think that this is a good um, this is a good overview of MixUp, the music collaboration system uh, that uh, is now live and official and available for the world to use. Um, I'm not going to summarize because we just spent an hour and a half, but basically this is we a new way more. to work with teams what sorry uh we have one more thing uh okay. Camille is uh reminding us to talk about the white label feature oh see i forgot some things i didn't have that on my on my uh, little list of things so check this out on the on the studio tier you can actually white label mix up you don't have to look at our logo you could put your logo uh, i don't have i guess enough of an ego to have done that on my mix up but maybe i should i don't know um, so you can actually, you know, I've never done it, but you can go, it's probably done online. This is flying without an eight people, my account, I'm a studio member. So that's nice. Uh, I can wipe label it Com company name. Oh, I don't have a logo on this computer. So you pick, you can basically replace our branding with your branding. And that allows you to really make your client feel like they're in your layer and they're not using some like you know, obscure third party thing. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I should do it. Thank you, Kemi. Yeah, I will uh, I will find a logo and put it up there so people know it's me. The other thing you can do, by the way, is you can put your own face on there. So when you, you know, there's all sorts of avatars and stuff. And I showed you the, the little, um, the way to decorate the playlist, which is pretty nice. It seems shallow, but it actually makes people feel great. Like when, when you, if you're a, a, an artist or a band and you show up, and your music is into some like nondescript, you know, Web 3.0 look. Eh, it looks a certain way. It's not great. But if you, it doesn't feel great. It doesn't put you in the mood. But if you come to mix up and, you know, there's a picture of the artist and the background is actually extracted from the picture automatically for you, it's nice. Um, I, I can tell from the interaction with the artist that they really dig it. Um, so I'm going to bring, uh, bring you back. Do you have something else, boss? No, just the white label thing is amazing, and it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about how clients just feel this instant level of customer service and yeah. you know just yeah. trust in you because you have things so well organized and the whole process is so much easier that it, it really adds to the client experience as well as you and your you know removing in headaches, yeah in the so. in the in the in the in the creation of art um, the last thing you want to do is for the canvas to be a pain you know what I mean so uh, creating the most amount of familiarity and security and um, uh, coziness uh, without having to do it yourself basically the system takes care of that for you allows you to focus on the on the continent of the art itself not the container and and I'm it's working it, re it really works great uh, people actually you know at the beginning like I can say you know seven eight months ago when we were at, at a point in the development where maybe some things were broken 
and I had to stop using Mixup for a week or two because it was not reliable, um, because that's how web dev and plugin dev works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I had to stop using Mixup because I needed to get the stuff done, and I wanted to make absolutely sure that people would get the files. Sure enough, um, who was it? It was Sophia. I sent uh, Sophia Ray. Um, I sent her a Dropbox link. And sure enough, the text came back and said, hey, could you put it on Mixup? And that made me feel very good. I was like, uh, no, I cannot right now, but thank you very much for that text. That, was, that felt nice. Uh, because once you're in it, it's really difficult to, to I, I, there's no going back. I'm not, um, once you go Mixup, you can't go back. Um, so that's it. I think we're going to finish on that. Once you go mix up, in my opinion, you can't go back. Voila. I think, I think this is a good first stream. You can download it. It's free. Download it. Use it. Send us feedback. There is a, um, um, there's a demo when you open your mix up. You register. You do your thing. By the way, you can log into mix up with your pure mix account. If you're a pure mixer, your pure mix credentials will get you straight into mix up, which is pretty awesome. And Mixup remembers who you are, um, so you don't have to re-enter them every time. So that's also very nice. Uh, and when you're going to open your Mixup account, you're going to see um, example playlists. So there is uh, the Live Votes project. Uh, and so you can listen to everybody's uh, Live Votes in the shape of a track with versions, which is pretty cool. And then there is the, um, and my friend Luc from Part of Magic, that's one of the records I mixed using Mixup in the last um, six months. Um, I said, hey, can I use some of your tracks to show uh, people so that people will get on Mixup, they have music to listen to, and they can see the versioning and the playlisting? And he said, yes. So you have access to the Part of Magic, a few tracks of the Part of Magic record. And that's going to sit into your Mixup as, as demo tracks, which is pretty cool. Um, and maybe we'll add some more over time. Maybe we can add some of Mark's mixes. What do you think, Mark? <laughs> Well, <laughs> we um, do that. yes. Uh, so we should talk about lifeboats. Yeah, let's talk about lifeboats. Yeah, you, uh, I believe that everybody who creates a new account has a lifeboats playlist in there. Yeah, and also I mean, a um, part of magic playlist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you guys can go through and listen to uh, mixes by CLA, Mick Kuzowski, Jakir King, John Paterno, uh, everybody who's participated in the mix in the uh, lifeboats project. Mm -hmm. All of their mixes are up in a mix-up player, and you can use that to compare them level matched mm -hmm. one by one. Level matched, very yes. Uh, it's very nice, actually. It gives you a, a real good insight on what level management does, and also on the completely different vision of all these people on the same exact track. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and we had that because you could watch the different videos, but being able to just like have everything synced up and just clicking one click, and you can hear the differences. It's Really interesting. And the level matching works, too. It's great. Very nice. Very nice. Actually, did you put that playlist together? I did. Yes. Which mix, do you, you, which mix of mine do you use? I don't recognize it. Uh, it is from your Cubase video. Oh, the Cubase mix. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. So The comments on that have been really interesting, too, because people, you know, going through all the different videos, they mm -hmm. had their favorites. And yeah. then after listening in the Mix Up playlist, it's mm -hmm. funny because some people were commenting in the, in the Pure Mix Facebook group that uh, their opinions had completely changed after being able to hear things so closely together. Right. Yeah. Uh, perception and reality, two very different things. And, um, and um, it's really nice to be able to focus on just listening and not have to think about it anything else that's really it's really cool so i think we're going to leave it at that and um for those of you uh, still watching thank you so much for coming uh for this unveiling and official launch of mix up the audio and uh, i hope to see you on there and um i hope you use it and i hope it does really great things for you uh like it's been doing for everybody on the team and another last round of congratulations to the mix up team for pulling this unbelievable feet off um, and this is one oh just you wait to see what we have in store it's gonna be even more amazing I'm very excited so thank you so much see you around